Yo, welcome back to the channel guys. My name's Gareth, this is Tech Check, and today we're back building a computer. Yay! So, we've recently been doing other things, not so much exciting stuff, but I know that you guys love PC builds. So, we're building an Intel 10th gen system today. Uh, I'm going to run you through all the parts, but before we do that, I just want to say a huge thank you uh, to each and every subscriber that's joined the community over the last few weeks. Really, really appreciate your guys' support. It goes a long, long way to helping the channel out. So if you've not done so already, yep, yeah, you smash that subscriber button, leave a thumbs up if you find some value in the videos and leave your comments below because I thoroughly enjoy going through each and every one. I reply where possible. We've had some fantastic comments and uh, it keeps my spirits up as well. So it doesn't cost you anything, but it goes a long way to put a smile on my face as well. So thank you very much. If you're looking to build an Intel 10th gen system, obviously the 11th gen has been out for a few months now, doesn't necessarily offer the best value or the performance increase over the last uh, gen. So I think still 10th gen operates uh, fantastic performance and offers some fantastic value as well. So stick around guys, step-by-step -step process in this Carbide 275R with a 10600 and we'll talk a little bit about the parts in a minute and uh, zoom! <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay. We'll just get into it. We'll just get into it. So we'll kick it off guys by just spending a couple of minutes going through these parts. I won't waste too much of your guys' time, but I just want to show you what we're using and why. So to start it off, we always start with the CPU. This is an i5-10600K. It's a six core, 12 threaded CPU. It's got a base frequency of 4.1 gigahertz and it turbos up to 4.8 uh, gigahertz as well. So absolutely fantastic value CPU. 10th gen, obviously, and I think this is much more suitable over the, the 11th gen series just because of value for price per performance and obviously there's a lot of money to be saved on the boards etc so looking forward to seeing what this can do moving on so let's move on to the actual motherboard itself so we have gone with msi this is their mpg uh, lineup this is the z490 gaming carbon so Absolutely fantastic uh, motherboard, guys. It's a Z490. It's, well, everything that you would expect from basically a Z490 board. It's got some nice uh, upgrades in terms of aesthetics. Uh, it comes with all the normality. It says on the back here, it's got Wi-Fi 6. It's got USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2. It's got 2.5 gig LAN. It's got an 8-pin and a 4-pin CPU power connector, so you're going to have really clean power delivery. It comes with the normal Mystic Light and LED controls, built-in I.O. shield, as you would expect, and some really good audio connections as well. We'll talk a little bit more about the connections on the actual board when we install it, though. Right, so for cooling, this 10600K, we've gone with what I think is one of the prettiest... Um, fan coolers that there actually is out there. So not only does this offer fantastic uh, aesthetics, it's near enough silent, guys. So from my experience, this thing here, you can use on any, and I mean any CPU, mainstream CPU that is. And this is the Dark Rock Pro 4. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, get this installed and I'm sure this will be absolutely ample for this. You can, well, you can call anything up to 250 watt TDP with this particular cooler. So absolutely brilliant and really nice uh, cooler. And we'll talk more about it once we install it. For power supply, you, saw, you guys have seen this on a number of times. Trusty old RM850X. Absolutely fantastic uh, power supply or PSU. It's got ultra low noise uh, capacity um, it's got some really nice cables really clean aesthetics and in my experience you get what you pay for guys don't cheap out on the on the power supply it's one of those things that basically powers 
well, it is that thing that powers everything in your computer. So if you've gone and spent 600, 800 pound or 300 pound on a CPU and God knows how much it is for a GPU nowadays, um, you don't want to be busting those by having a poor PSU. So make sure you get a decent one. And this RM850 from Corsair definitely fits the bill. Keeping with Corsair, We've gone with 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3200 megs from Corsair as well. This is their LPX. It's C16. Again, no frills, absolute, well, brilliant performance. And in terms of obviously just that clean black aesthetic as well. So really good. XMP, no problems. And uh, this will pair nicely with everything else we've got. For storage, We've gone with the trusted old Seagate Barracuda for our mass storage drive. Uh, nothing too fancy, guys. It's nowadays quite a, a cheap uh, alternative. You've got, obviously, a number of different ones that you could go with, but I tend to go with Seagate Barracudas just because they seem to be more reliable just than me. For our onboard storage, we've gone with quite a cheap alternative. Now, this is a 512 gig M.2. It's a PCIe Gen 3. Um, and this is going to have our operating system on and any games that we use on a regular basis just so we've got fast access to those and obviously this goes straight onto the motherboard so it should perform reasonably well um, but yeah I've not really had any experience with this so I'm quite excited to see uh, what this can actually do as well but this is the solid straight drive S70 from Adlink um, and I guess we'll have a look at it a bit later. For attaching the CPU to the motherboard for with our um, thermal paste, we've got some Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut. Standard, really good uh, performing uh, paste, so you can't go wrong there. And we have got just one more additional LL120 fan as well. So what we're going to be doing, guys, we're going to be chucking all that in this Corsair Carbide 275R. Uh, really nice case, mid-tower case from Corsair. And we'll talk more about this as and when we can get it out and we can take it apart and have a quick look at things much more closer. For graphics card, guys, we have got uh, RTX 2080 Ti from Asus. This is their Strix OC edition. So we haven't been lucky enough to get our hands on a 30 series card. But this, in my eyes, is only bettered really by the 3080 and 3090. And... I've got it in my build and in all honesty, it's an absolute brilliant card and there's not really anything that I do at this moment in time that requires an improvement over this card unless I actually find one at a decent price, which has not happened yet and it's been eight months. So that's all the parts, guys. We're going to jump into the next section where we'll start putting things together and if you want to build along uh feel free to do so i'll try and explain everything as i can and uh yeah stick with me guys so like any time we build a computer guys we want to do as much outside the case as we physically can that way we've got much more room to move and there's no effects in terms of the light and things like that to obstruct us from getting things on or installing anything so what we want to do is we want our motherboard we want our cpu we want our M.2 or NVMe, and then we want our RAM as well, okay? So, what we'll do is we'll get this motherboard out of its box. We'll see what connections we actually want. We don't want the Wi-Fi, we don't want that. We want one of those, just so we've got it. And we don't need RGB. I'm looking for the little M.2 screws, there we go. There we go, right. Nice. Right, so let's get to uh, meat and bones of the situation. Let's have a quick look at this board itself. That's an absolute stunning board. That is a really nice looking board. Wow. That is a nice board. So, I actually really like that. Really like that. So, there you go, guys. That's what the Carbon MSI Z490 board looks like. 
and it's really pretty and I mean really pretty as far as motherboards go um I tend to edge towards uh, MSI and Asus motherboards I think you get a I think you get what you pay for with anything but this tends to be a better aesthetic on MSI and Asus boards as well and on this particular one especially the carbon version it's uh, yeah it's really nice so it comes with two m.2s obviously they've got shields over and we'll obviously use the top slot for our ssd or m.2 M obviously more pcie lanes uh, to the m.2 drive at the top um, we've got a really good heat sink over our vrms we've got four slots for our ram loads of connectivity for rgbs and fans yeah, so as we mentioned before, guys, it comes with USB-C, which is USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is just here. You've obviously got your standard USB 3. Um, as far as boards go, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with regards to what this actually looks like. So, right, moving on. So, guys, next step is our CPU, and this is uh, i5 10600K. Absolutely fantastic CPU, 6 core, 12 thread. And this will pair really, really nicely with this fantastic motherboard as well. So first thing we've got to do, guys, is we unhinge the lever here. And we open the retention bracket, whatever you want to call it. And what we can then do is we can take the CPU out of its carry case. Please be careful when we're opening these because I've seen some horror stories and heard some horror stories of these flying out. And there's nothing worse of damaging this. So just keep your fingers on the sides, off of uh, the IHS and obviously off of the back as well. Remember, the pins are in the socket on Intel boards, so don't go throwing this into the socket either. We look for the triangle on the actual CPU itself, and then we match that with the triangle that's on the CPU socket, and that way we can gently lower it in to the CPU. There we go. Get a bit of a jiggle. And then we slide down this bracket. We put the arm back under and we press down. And then that retention lever can go back under. And for the love of God, don't do what a lot of people do, which is throw this. Because if you ever need to RMA your board, this will protect your socket. So keep it nice and safe. Keep it with your anti-static bag and keep it also with this little holder for your CPU because it's always nice if you ever want to sell it, you've got all the bits to safely transport it as well. But there you go, guys. Our CPU nicely installed, easy as pie into our nice Z490 board. Next step, we are going to install our RAM. So first thing we need to do, guys, is we need to identify which slots we need to uh, basically occupy. And it's very, very easy. You work from the outside in. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Number one is consulting your manual if you don't know which slots to obviously populate. And the second thing is you've got a little grid which is just showing here on the motherboard. And on this particular one, it's asking us to uh, occupy dim B2 and A2. So B2 is the far most outer one, and then you skip one, and then you occupy the second one in, okay? So outer, miss one, occupy, okay? So you'll notice on the RAM stick, we have a little groove right smack bang in the middle. It's more to the right than it is to the left. All we need to do is basically line up our dim stick with the RAM slot and make sure that we pop it in both sides and then evenly apply pressure until it clicks into place. Do the same with the second one in the third slot. And even pressure. There we go. In fact, that one doesn't look like it's in properly. There it is. And then we've got our RAM nicely installed as well in the correct dim slots, nicely seated, and within the space of five minutes, 
We've sorted our CPU, we've sorted our motherboard, and we've sorted our RAM as well. Next step will be to install our NVMe or M.2. Quite simple, guys. We just need to remove this shield which occupies this top slot. Two little screws. There we go. And that should lift nicely up. Keep those screws nice and safe. And what you have got, guys, on the back of this uh, shield here is a little bit of protective film. And we'll need to remove that once we have installed our M.2. What we don't want to do is install that on top of our M.2 because this gets really, really hot. It could melt that and then you've got a bit of a mess. So make sure that you don't do that. We need to obtain the two or the one screw that we're going to require out of your motherboard box. And it, they're tiny, tiny screws, guys. So make sure that you've got those ready. And what we can do is we can gain access to our M.2. It always fascinates me how small 512 gigabytes actually is. And don't get me wrong, you can get eight, um, eight terabytes now the same size, but it's still fascinating that 10, 15, well, 20 years ago, that, well, probably didn't even exist. And if it did, it was about yay big. So what we need to do, guys, is we need to install this onto the top slot. Now, the easiest way of doing this you need to make sure that you slot this in at a slight angle. There we go, at a slight angle. And we need to make sure that we've got a standoff in the correct place. And on this particular motherboard, it's already installed correctly. On some motherboards, what you will find is the standoff doesn't match up with where it needs to screw in. And you'll have to remove the standoff, correctly place it, and then you can screw it in. But just remember, when you're placing this in, you want to do it at a slight angle like that, and it will flop around a little bit. We need to obtain our tiny little screw, which is a nightmare, because you end up losing these if you're not careful. And these don't need to be mega tight when we're installing them either, but just press down and make sure that it goes in. And as soon as it bites, it's absolutely fine. Like we mentioned before, in terms of the shield, we need to remove this protective film, which we can easily do. And then all we've got to do is install this back on top of our M.2. There we go. Replace both of the screws and make sure they're adequately screwed in. Again, does not need to be mega tight. There we go, nicely done. And in a nutshell, guys, in the space of six or seven minutes, that is our motherboard completely sorted. So then, guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the actual CPU cooler, which is this Dark Rock Pro 4. Um, as we've mentioned before, absolutely fantastic looking um, CPU cooler. Um, not only does it look absolutely mint because it's all black, but... It actually performs phenomenally well, uh, phenomenal, phenomenally well, uh, and is basically comparable to some 360 and 280 mil all-in-one coolers as well. So without further ado, we'll get this installed onto here. Now, I'm hoping to God that this has the clearance for the actual CP, uh, for the, I'm hoping to God that this has the clearance once installed in this 275R carbide case and uh, we don't have to change it. So we'll, we'll, we'll risk it for a biscuit. So let's get into this. I love the fact that they give you a screwdriver. I love it. Comes with a tiny little bit of thermal paste just for us. All the screws, obviously our splitter cable as well. We'll look at that afterwards. We don't need to do it now. We're obviously wanting the Intel brackets, so we'll get those. We don't need those ones either, because they're AMD. And just having a quick look at this um, cooler, it is big. 
B.I.G. boys and girls. It is absolutely humongous. But I love the total blackout look. Um, obviously, you do get some Noctua ones, which are, well, the DHC-14, which is down there, and some newer ver uh, versions, which, again, are phenomenal coolers. But for me, this all-in-black is absolutely fantastic especially with these black uh, be quiet fans as well so yeah absolutely stunning cpu cooler so next step guys is installing our be quiet dark pro 4 and the first thing we need to do is we need to obtain our uh, intel backplate okay we then need to install these intel mounting screws and the easiest way of doing that is by putting it in at the back and you'll see that it doesn't quite sit flush like that, okay? What we have to do is just slightly turn the screw until it sits flush and you'll see it fits nicely. And then what we've got to do is just get one of these little rubber O-rings like this and we need to push it onto the back to make sure that we can hold the screws in place. Not only that, it gives a little bit of a cushion at the back of the motherboard. What we can do then is we can pick up the motherboard and we can place this through the back four screws like so. And then we can place this down so it doesn't push out. There we go. Right. Now that we've got our bracket in place, we can take the, the spacers and we can basically install these on top of that bracket and we'll put one on one corner and then we'll go directly to the other corner as well. There we go. And what we can do guys is we can just tighten these up to a point where they no longer move and that should be plenty tight enough. There we go. Right. What we need to do then is we have got the other two brackets and we can position those and make sure that they fit. We want to make sure that they're leaning inwards as well. So once those brackets are on top, guys, what we need to do is secure those down with these smaller screws, just like this. And we can take the screwdriver and we can screw those in, no problem. Fantastic. Right. Next step is we can remove some of this stuff because what we don't want to do is lose any of it. What we've got left now is we've got our splitter cable. Once we've installed the second fan, we've got our little metal clips to hold it on. And then we've got our bracket to secure on top of here once we've actually put the CPU cooler in place. So last thing after that will be two screws which will hold our cpu cooler to our bracket that we've just installed so we can move this to one side and we can take a look at our actual cooler itself so what we need to be looking at and i don't want to do that is we want to install now our very thin but lovely 140 mil fan and that can go either at the back or it can go in the middle. Obviously for me, we just want to make sure that we're orientating it the same way as what this one is here. So we want to make sure that this is like that. And that way we can take that fan out of there and we can place it just inside here like this, okay? But what we also need to do guys is we need to get some of our clips and start installing those and I'll do that in a second. So what we're going to do now, guys, we've removed that film off the end of the CPU cooler. It's nice and clean. What we can do is we can put a pea-sized shape right in the middle of the CPU. There we go. 
And what we can do, guys, is we can place this in the angle or the direction that we want on top of this CPU. Still now, we don't want to be obviously moving it around much because we don't want the CPU to obviously lose that connectivity. We remove the two little beads at the top up here. And what we can do is we can install the bracket that comes at the bottom. We can use this to go through the holes at the top of the CPU cooler. And then we want to use these longer screws down here as well. There we go. I'm not going to put it all the way in because I want to make sure that we apply even pressure. I'm just going to turn this round so I can apply this screw here. Turn that back round. And now we just apply pressure to make sure that everything gets attached. And we just keep doing that until it gets to a point where it's nice and firmly tight. We don't need to go mega, mega tight just to a point where you can't really turn it with your fingers without obviously going mad. And we're there now. This one's last. There we go, done. So, fantastic. So we should have our board, which is nicely, <laughs> that, that is huge. <laughs> that is absolutely humongous and i mean massive um we've got our fan cable which is up there which once we install the second fan we will then attach the splitter and we'll attach it to our cpu header but that is massive um but yes that is absolutely humongous i'm just hoping and praying it fits inside this case because yeah it's big but what i can say guys that carbon on black looks mwah beautiful right so we've got one fan header here we've got our cpu fan header which is there which is absolutely perfect what we can do is we can go ahead and just plug in one of our fan headers onto the splitter shall i say and then what we need to do is we need to install our secondary fan inside the middle of this gap here fine and what we can do then guys is we can just attach our other fan header to our splitter cable and that's fine and then what we need to do is we need to get rid of these cables and we need to attach it to our fan header as well which i'll show you more closely in a minute what we can also do is we can attach these little screws which we removed earlier which will make it perfectly black on top right so last thing to do then guys, is to attach these little metal brackets here and that will keep our fan firmly in place. So installation of the middle fan guys is very, very straightforward. All we've got to do is I've already put this front one on. We just need to push the fan through so you can hook the two eyes. One goes on the very top and one goes on the very bottom. And then all we need to do is just pull this around and make sure that it clips just firmly in place like that. And that will ensure that the fan is secure and means that you're not gonna get any rattling or anything like that. So all in all, not a bad process. Um, I think Be Quiet have improved the actual installation process quite dramatic, to be honest, by installing these two removable screws at the top, providing you with a long screwdriver to be able to install it. And it feels rock solid, to be quite honest with you. So pure up, yeah, I can understand why. So last thing to do is obviously attach our CPU uh, fan to our CPU fan header. 
and we can hide these particular cables as well. So I just want to attach this, which is going to be a little fiddly with my massive hands. There we go. Right. And then what we can do is we can hide this splitter cable and we can hide the rest of the cables at the back here by pushing them under. I thought we could get that in there somewhere. There we are. That should be about as good as what we can get. So, there we go. In terms of hiding the cables, that splitter cable, I would say, is not the best quality uh, compared to the, the braided cables that actually come with the fans. So, and it's a bit of a pain in the ass because the cables are actually quite long comparable to where the position of the CPU header is on the motherboard. So, I guess it's always nicer to have a longer cable than to have too much of a shorter one. But in a nutshell, guys, that's it. We are actually there. So it weighs an absolute ton. Um, installation weren't too bad. And I'm in love with this carbon uh, MPG MSI board. It is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the looks of it just looks... Looks a little bit like a Batmobile if it was a, uh, a motherboard. So, yeah, really, really nice. What we're going to do then, guys, is move on to the next step, which is installing our motherboard into our case. So we'll move all this stuff to one side and we will crack open the case. We'll have a quick look at that and then we'll get this installed. And there she is, guys. So, a 275R carbide from Corsair. And it's, on first glance, it's a really, really nice case. Um, comes with a full glass side panel, which is absolutely fantastic. I can see that it's got a nice uh, metal finish to this. In fact, I don't think it is metal. I think it's plastic. But... They've obviously thought about airflow because there's probably about 60 mil gap down the side here to let air come in. Um, so that's quite nice. In terms of front panel connectivity, we have a few USBs at the front and connectivity for a mic and a headphone set. And yeah, it looks to come with uh, two fans, one at the front, one at the rear. Uh, let's crack off the side panel and let's just have a quick look. We can remove the side panel by removing these four thumb screws. I'm not a huge fan of these thumb screws, in all honesty, because they, uh, yeah. Let's see what happens when I take the last one out. Make sure that I'm keeping hold of it, because these tend to either fall off one side and they absolutely decimate your desk. No, nope, that's good. So they have got those little plastic caps which hold them in place. So as you can see there, guys, it's got some fantastic rubber grommets, which are here. We've got space for obviously a 360 mil radiator at the front with a cutout at the bottom of this actual shroud here. And a lovely grommet here, which is obviously perfect for your graphics cards. It's got vent here, so if you wanted your um, PSU to be faced upwards then you could. It's also got a magnetic filter at the top which is great where you can have a 280 mil cooler there. It's also at the bottom got a filter at the bottom for your PSU which you would normally always do at the bottom unless you were placing it on carpet whereas it comes with these nice little uh, rubber feet which is good. Um, let's take a look at the back we can do that by removing these two thumb screws, which are actually captive as well. So in terms of storage, we've got our box of goodies, which every manufacturer now does. They pop all those in there. We've got two toolless hard drives down here for your three and a half inch drives. We've also got two slots here for our two and a half inch drives, which are SSDs. You could also mount uh, some more SSDs on the side here. And again, it's got this nice little grommets down the side for us to be able to obviously put our cables through and not worry about obviously catching them. 
The great thing about Corsair guys is they do seem to think about cable routing and management and they seem to find space where other manufacturers don't. Um, I do have some massive fans. I love Fantex. I love uh, Leon Lee. I, I do like Corsair um, primarily because I use quite a lot of RGB in these builds and the cables are a nightmare. So it's nice to see there's loads of nice cutouts everywhere just in the right places and that little bit of extra money guys goes a long long way difference between 50 pounds and perhaps 65 pounds that 15 pounds will get you all that hassle saved by making sure you've got cutouts rubber grommets and all the additional stuff uh, in the nice places so just things to think about when you are purchasing a case a little bit of extra money in my opinion is really well worth spending so you've got plenty of space down here for a really power, uh, a really large power supply. And in our case, it's got some nice little, um, what feels like foam grommets at the bottom. So it'll stop any vibrations. Um, and again, it's got the filter down there as well. So in terms of what it comes with from front IO, we have got our USB 3, which is standard, our HD audio, and obviously just our front panel connectors power led reset switch and power switch etc etc so nothing uh, ott there so yeah let's get this motherboard installed and let's check that that pro rock uh, 4 actually fits inside before we all get excited and uh, we'll move on one thing to mention here guys as well it automatically comes with pre-installed standoffs which is another given of having a nice case as well so what we can do then guys is we'll just test to see if this actually fits in obviously we have got a pre-installed oh that's going to be close but it fits get in there come on perfect black case with a total blackout build this is going to be i'm going to call it batman honestly it looks insane right so everything lines up on those pre-installed standoffs, which is absolutely fantastic. That just looks mint, absolutely mint. I'm well excited for this. What we're gonna do is we'll get the motherboard installed, then we'll chuck in this extra fan at the front. So we've got two fans blowing loads of fresh air into this cooler, keeping that CPU cool. Again, it's only 11,600, uh, sorry, 10,600K. So it's not gonna get massively hot, but again, this, beast of a cooler will handle that no issues no problems um what we will do also is we will chuck in the ll120 at the rear might do that um sooner rather than later just so we've got no accessibility issues i uh, just want to check to see what our cpu can i get my hand in there for our cpu yeah we can get a cpu in there no problem Again, I'll need to think about when I put the fan in just to make sure I've got access to that as well. So these are all the kind of things, guys, that you want to be thinking of because you don't want to be installing your fan and then you can't get your hand in to install your CPU connections to your motherboard. Um, you don't want to be thinking, I can't fit anything anywhere because I've not thought about it before we install it. So, yeah, I don't know whether you can tell. I'm quite excited. It's a really pretty case. Not a mega expensive case. And like I said, I'll leave all the links down below uh, in the description. But this is coming together really nicely. So what you want to do, guys, is go into that nice little box that Corsair provided us. And we want to obtain the correct screws for mounting our motherboard. In this particular case, it comes with a whole magnitude of different uh, screws, etc, etc. So I'm just going to get out... I wonder what the Allen key's for. No idea. So they've given us loads of zip ties as well and a bit of 3M tape. Um, no idea, again. Another um, standoff, some more screws for the door, front door. Loads of uh, screws for obviously mounting our fans as well, which is great. Um, yeah. Overall, really, really pleased and impressed. Let's get the right screws. Here we go. So, we should need about eight or nine of these. 
So this is where a magnetic screwdriver does play a massive part as well, guys. So make sure you get yourself a magnetic screwdriver. And what we can start doing, and we're looking for the screws with the little cap on at the top. Uh, they secure into your motherboard and make sure you're using the right ones. You don't want to short anything out. And all we need to do is pop these into your motherboard. Make sure that they're going in straight so you don't round anything off. And again, you don't need to go mega, mega mental with regards to tightening these up, guys. Finger tight should be absolutely fine. Once you've got it finger tight, one or two extra screws or turns and you should be absolutely fine. Ooh, it looks nice. I'll show you after, once we've installed this fan here. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're just gonna install this 120 mil fan at the front to match the other 120 mil fan that came with the actual case. We wanna make sure that it's an intake. We also want to make sure that the cable is obviously utilized so we can put it at the side. And we're gonna put it high so it runs directly into our uh, CPU fan as well or cooler. We've installed it at the top guys because this will then push air straight into our CPU cooler and obviously that nice fresh cool air will only aid the cooling of the CPU as well. Obviously the front does support a 360mm rad so you could put it at the bottom if you really wanted to keep it, um, your hard drives or whatever your power supply a little bit more cool but I'd much rather have it higher up and therefore wafting all over our uh, RAM sticks and straight into that cooler. So what we'll do is we'll install these last two screws here for this fan and then we'll move on. So then guys, now that we've put that fan installed at the front, we can go ahead and replace the grill here or the mesh filter and that quite simply just goes in like that it's magnetic as well obviously what i would say is good idea just to pull this off every couple of months make sure that you take this out and give it a good vacuum that way you're keeping all your components all dust free and nice and clean uh, what we can also do is we can replace this lovely uh, front panel from corsair and which is plastic but it's got this brushed aluminium effect which I quite like it's quite nice but yeah it's just a bit of a tough pull to get off to begin with and then to get it back on simple as so then guys moving on to the hard drive as we mentioned previously it's a toolless operation and all we have to do is choose whether we want the top slot or the bottom slot and quite simply we want to make sure that we've got our connections at, at this side which is here at the back. We don't want to be installing it this way and then pushing it in like that because obviously we've got nothing to connect. So make sure that you are installing it in the correct fashion. Uh, what we have got here inside of this particular bracket is these two little air, air eyes on either side and we want to make sure that they go into or slide into the eyes where the screws would go. Really glad that uh, they started implementing these because is there any real need to have these screwed into these brackets? Not really, no. So dead easy, dead straightforward. Just make sure that they are lined up and get one side in correct first. And then what all you have to do is basically pull on the other side and pull it up. Easy, five seconds and you've got your install of your hard drive complete. So again, all we've got to do is then slide that in. And that's it. We go inside our motherboard tray and we pull out our SATA, uh, SATA, I've gone all American, SATA data cable and we'll attach that and then we'll need our uh, SATA power cable which will install the power supply now. So to install our SATA data cable guys, very, very straightforward. All we've got is I've retrieved it out of the motherboard. We've got a right angled connection here and a straight edge connection here. 
you can choose it doesn't make any difference vice versa works at the end of the day one will fit on like that the other one will fit on quite straight on no issues no problems i tend to like the, uh, the right angled ones attaching onto my motherboard just gives a cleaner clean cleaner cleaner look and then for the other one what we can do is make sure that you've got your metal clip upwards and we can quite clearly and simply just push that straight on like that so i won't worry too much about the the cable management at this moment in time and i won't connect anything onto the motherboard at this moment in time either because i like to make sure that everything is in and then i'll show you all the connections afterwards so talking about this rm850 guys the guy that actually uh, asked me to build this computer on his behalf is actually uh, looking to obviously make sure that he's got some longevity with this you get absolutely fantastic performance out of this and a good decent power supply guys if you look after them clean them out etc could last you seven to ten years so in my eyes it's a real good investment yes they cost a lot of money yes you can get ones at half the cost um which weigh about a quarter of the weight of this one as well but you know when you're investing in something quality like this it's going to last you a long time you've got loads of connectivity on the back so you're going to have no issues if you ever want to upgrade whether that be to i don't know a 3090 for instance or you're wanting to obviously add a 5950x or something along those lines 11900k um you've got plenty of scope here for upgrades and uh, you should never have any issues so again it's got a zero decibel fan if you wish to have it and in all honesty these fans uh, that are installed into these power supplies are relatively quiet anyway so what i'm going to do guys is i'm just going to uh, dry fit it if you like just to make sure that there's plenty of space and we're not going to have any issues that in looks like it to me yeah so we've got about two and a half, three inches at the back here. So we've got plenty of space for our cables. Obviously it is a modular power supply. So the beauty about that is that any cables that we don't want, we can keep in this bag and we don't have to have them shoved all behind the shroud here. So it makes the overall aesthetic of the build much easier, much cleaner as well. So I'm gonna crack on getting this installed now and uh, I'll show you which cables we're gonna be using. So the first cable, which is easy identified, guys, is the 24 pin. It's always the largest one in the box, which is not a problem. We've got our 8 pin CPU power cable, which is there, which is fantastic. Uh, we will need one of these, which is our SATA power cable. We have got PCIe cable. We're going to need one of those. We're also going to need another one of those. That's our four pin or our CPU. We should have another one of those PCIe ones there. Fantastic. And we should have another one just in case. Fine. So all I've got now then, guys, is our four screws for our PSU. We're going to use those to obviously hold our power supply in to the back of our case by screwing them in at the rear. Okay. So... All we're going to do is we are going to attach our 24 pin, our two P uh, power cables for our CPU, our SATA power cable, and our two PCIe cables for our graphics cards. They will go into the back of here. Please note that on the power cables that you will have notes on them or words on the sides which tell you which side goes into which. Now, this 24 pin is very, very self-explanatory. You've got a splitter, which obviously goes into the power supply. You've got a solid cable, which goes straight into the motherboard. But on other ones, you will see that there is CPU, CPU, and then PCIe. So you know which ones to plug it into. And then the other end goes into the corresponding component. So all we're going to do, guys, is we're going to put the cables into the back of the power supply. We're going to get that installed. We're going to secure it with these four screws here. And I'll see you in a jiffy.
So now the power supply is done guys, what we like to do now is start looking at cable management and the easiest way to go about this is to start re well, feeding your cables through which grommet you would like them and making sure that you've got the correct amount of slack to enable to connect, uh, connect them. Um, and then we can figure out where we're going to use our zip ties and tie everything down at the back. Last thing will be putting this fan and this GPU in and then we'll connect everything up and we are all done. Right then guys, so first thing, the easiest thing to do is to get rid of the 24 pin, okay? So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna route it up this central channel here and we're gonna make sure it goes through this top grommet here and therefore we can then push it through, we can figure out how much slack we're gonna have and the routing of the particular cable as well. Now, there isn't a huge amount of room at the back of this case. So I would guess it's about a centimeter to a 12 mil, something like that. So I'd like to get this through quite early on and that way we know exactly what we've got to play with. Same thing as what we're gonna do for our two CPU power cables. Obviously, this board requires an 8-pin and a 4-pin. Now, obviously, at the minute, we've got two 8-pins. So what we need to do is we just need to detach one of the 4-pins, like so. And then we can make sure that we can put one 4-pin on one 8-pin through this top gap up here and feed them through. Now, the reason why I haven't put the fan in at the rear yet is so I've got a bit of hand room in order to connect these because that well, CPU caller is humongous. So we'll get these on first as well. So we'll route these, uh, route these up here and make sure that they can fit through as well. Nicely done. And we'll do the same one or the same thing for the second one as well. So we now have our two power cables for our CPU, which can go up there nicely and we can route those cables no problem at all, just across there. We've got our USB 3, we've got our front panel connectors, and we've got our HD audio, which is fine, no problem at all. We'll keep those out the way for the minute as well. So, what else have we got? We've got our SATA power cable, which is here, to go with our SATA data cable. We can put this on. And again, guys, this is a solid back panel again. So whilst we want to make it look quite nice, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. So what we've done, guys, is we've took the two CPU power cables uh, up the side of the case. They can be tucked away just up there, but I've tied them down here. We've got a 24 pin, which we've pushed through at the top grommet. We've connected that, and I've just tied it down by two zip ties here as well. Now that leaves us with our front panel uh, power cables and io and then we've got our hd audio and our usb 3 connection here and two fan connections here that we need to connect to the motherboard as well so what we're going to do first is we're going to push our usb 3 and our hd audio through and then we'll do our uh, power connections last of all we've already run our sata uh, data cable for our hard drive and obviously our m.2 doesn't require any power because it's already on the motherboard itself so we'll put these through now and uh, I'll catch you in a second. So guys, the HD audio always connects on the bottom left hand corner of your motherboard as well. It's dead easy to understand how it goes in. There's actually a blank in the actual uh, connector itself. So just look at the pin configuration, turn it to swizzle around and make sure it fits and then just apply it firmly and that's absolutely fine. So let's get that done. So our USB 3 guys goes just here. Um, again, you're a little bit far away, but it goes just here. Again, on the USB 3 cable, there is a little notch. You just need to make sure that that notch lines up with the connector on the motherboard. And again, you should be absolutely fine. Right, we've now got our front panel connectors, which are here, power LED, HDD. Uh, power switch, reset switch, and then we've got our two fans which are here. And once we've done that, we can snip all the ends of the zip ties off and we can test to see whether the front panel or the back panel actually fits on. 
hopefully. And down the side of the motherboard up here, guys, we've got system fan one, two, three, and four, okay? So, well, pump fan system one, two, and three. And all we're gonna do is we are gonna connect these two connections here onto system fan one and system fan two. So even though these are four pin PWM connections and we've only got a three pin, that's not a problem at all. We can just put them on and they'll only run in DC mode, not uh, PWM mode, but that's absolutely fine. We can configure those in the BIOS. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna connect our front panel connectors. And here we have got our power switch, our power LED, our reset switch, uh, and all we're gonna to have to do is connect the positives and negatives to these connectors, which are just down here. So one pin in from the right, so where my finger is now, is the reset switch, and the positive is on the right, and the negative is on the left, and then it's opposites when you go to the power switch above. So it's the positive at the top on the left, and the negative on the right. And again, with the power LEDs, it's positive on the left, and negative on the right, right next to the power switch. So let's get these connectors on. You can easily identify which ones are positive and which ones are negative by these little indentations on the top. There's a little arrow just at the end, if I can get my finger out of the way, you might be able to just see if the light will shine on it. There we go. So that indicates which one is the positive, okay? So just take your time, because this bit is a bit fiddly, and if you're unaware, Always consult your motherboard manual or consult the grid, which is just on your motherboard as well at the bottom. So the next step, guys, is we are going to install our uh, LL120. I personally think it would be much, much better if we just used a black fan, in all honesty. Um, I don't know how RGB is going to look in this uh, actual build. I think it's going to make it look a little, little cheap, to be honest, because... I absolutely adore the pure black and adding this Corsair fan as nice as uh, a little bit of RGB is from time to time if it's all in RGB it's kind of all in sync when you've got one fan unless it's on a cooler for instance yeah I'm not uh, I'm not feeling it so inst uh, installing the fan guys, very, very, very basic, okay? So we just wanna make sure that we're orientating it in the same or oh, the correct way. Obviously at this moment in time, it's gonna be blowing air to me. Obviously this way it's gonna be blowing air towards yourself. So we want this as an exhaust. So we wanna make sure that we're entering it into the system like this. Make sure your cable is on the most inner side. So that way you're not making sure that you've got crappy cable management. And then it's just purely as simple as putting the screws in, securing it in place, and then we're all good to go. We can connect it to our motherboard. I would say that the on first installation with any fan, it is very, very tight to get these screws in. So just take your time, don't slip and obviously break anything. You wanna make sure that they go in nicely because they've just not been screwed into before. So guys, once that's now installed, what we need to do is we need to attach our four pin PWM header onto a, a fan header. So what we have got is we've got a fan header which is just right next to uh, the CPU fan and just under the VRM. Again, very, very straightforward when we're putting these on. All we need to do is we just need to basically connect um, these little slots here with the pins on the motherboard and then we're good to go. So let's go ahead guys, let's get that GPU and it's not just any GPU. We are talking about, let's just move this to one side. We can move it around this way now. We're talking about this RTX 2080 Ti. It's the Strix edition, it's the OC edition. Um, in my opinion, the best graphics card there was from last generation. It's an absolute beast and it still is, guys. I've got one in my computer just up there. I've still got one more up there and one more down there as well. So, from in, in my opinion, these cards are absolute beasts. 
and then you can see the the other one which is not that one that's a 7950 i think from uh, amd but the one just behind it so in my opinion these cards are absolutely phenomenal i i use mine every single day there's nothing that i throw at it that it can't do admittedly 3080s are better 3090s are better but i still think these are on par if not better than the 3070s just due to the additional vram that you get the 11 gig rather than the 8 um and yeah still perform absolutely phenomenal at 1440p and 50 to 60 frames at uh, 4k as well so in my opinion absolute amazing card depends on what you pay for them obviously um but in my opinion, I don't think you can get a better card if you can't get your hands on a 3080. So, moving on. Let's unbox this. Let's get it in there. Uh, let's sort out these PCIe cables. Let's bang on the back panel. And uh, let's put some power into this baby. So, let's get into this. Ooh. In my opinion, guys, this is one of the nicest looking cards that uh, NVIDIA's well, brought out. Um, I love everything about it. This is identical to mine. Um, in fact, no, it's not. This one's got a, a black uh, backplate and mine's got a silver backplate. But the connectivity is identical. The, the colours are identical. Uh, this actual back plate here is identical to mine as well. Um, yeah, I just think that overall they are absolutely stunning cards and very, very expensive when they came out and didn't offer a huge improvement like the RTX 3080 does over this comparable to the 1080 Ti um, just because the 1080 Ti was a beast in its own right. So, um, yeah. Love these cards, best graphics cards in the world, in my opinion. And uh, we're about to install it in this young man's computer. So what I do, guys, is first things first, I remove that PCIe cover there. I then tend to take out uh, the, the actual connections. So the display port, because they're always bloody tight. There we go. That's one. And which one should we do? Let's do this one here. Let's have a HDMI and a display port just in case. I don't know how I'm gonna connect it to the monitor yet. So we'll take those ones out. And then it's very, very straightforward, guys. What we need to be doing is thinking about how many slots is this card gonna take up? Now, it's a two slot card. So we need to be removing two of these back plates or covers um, or guards, whatever you wanna call them from this back panel here. So dead straightforward if we can find a screwdriver do, 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 do. oh it's up there we can do it with this one it's fine so what we're going to do guys is it normally is number two and number three that we need to remove so very straightforward just remove number two and number three with a screwdriver there we go and we can remove those what we also need to do guys is we install these graphics cards on the uppermost pcie lane Okay, that's your X16 slot. There's more PCIe lens going to that slot. So therefore it's gonna perform much better, okay? So what we have to do is we have to open our PCIe lane by opening this catch just here, okay? And then we can line our graphics card up with this slot, ensuring that it's also in the slots at the back. So then give it a firm push, guys. Listen for that click, which was just there, and then it is nicely in score, okay? So, first thing we need to do then is, before we start attaching power cables, is we want to put back the two little screws that we've removed. This just makes sure that it's giving it that little bit more support because these are humongous cards. And what you don't want it doing is you're applying pressure with the PCIe cables, and then all of a sudden, it falls out or snaps the PCIe uh, bracket and then you're it's the worst thing in the world. So, God, this looks nice. It looks so nice. 
So what we've got now, guys, is we've got uh, two eight pin connections here. Obviously, what a lot of people think they can do is just use this connection and then fold it over like this. In theory, you can do the cleanest power delivery to ensure that you're not gonna have any hiccups with regards to your GPU is to run two individual eight pin connections from your power supply, much cleaner, much easier, and less issues in terms of obviously power spikes and stuff like that. Now, it does come with its own problems because now we've got two cables rather than one, and obviously with this Corsair power supply, what they've done is they've put a splitter on the side of it, and it means that it's gonna look pretty ugly. So what we need to do is we need to tie up or kind of tie up these, and then hope that we can push it back into that gap underneath the shroud, okay? But essentially, all we need to do is to connect two eight pin connectors to our graphics card, and then hide the cables, and we're there. So give me a second, we'll do that, and we'll move on. Such a nice clean build, guys. Absolutely stunning, as just in black. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and the, you can't see much of it, but that carbon on that uh, MPG MSI uh, more, uh, motherboard is absolutely stunning as well. Overall, this should be called the Dark Knight, this build, because it is just pure black. No other colour, no RGB. There will be a little bit with regards to the graphics card and a little bit that will come off the, the motherboard when we uh, put some power into it. But overall, really, really nice build. Let's get the, the back panel on. Let's do that test. Then we can put the front panel on. We can bang some power into it and let's see what it looks like. Da, 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 da. Please shut. Oh, easy. No problem. So there she is, guys. What we'll do is we'll do the peel. That was some noise, that was. And overall, guys, I'm absolutely blown away by, well, just about everything. Everything was so, so easy. This 275R carbide case from Corsair is an absolute pleasure to work with. The cutouts are in the most perfect places. The rubber grommets are a great additional touch. The full length shroud blacked out is absolutely beautiful. The side panel, which is obviously full side panel with these four thumb screws to keep it in place. Absolutely brilliant as well. Um, there's nothing bad about this case. Plenty of connectivity, plenty of space for your power supply. So this is an 850 watt. You could easily fit in a 1000 watt power supply if you needed to. Obviously remembering this is a mid tower case. Obviously, I don't know whether you'd require a 1000 watt power supply unless you're going absolutely mental. But if you did want to, it's obviously large enough for this Dark Rock Pro 4. Be quiet, uh, massive cooler as well, which I absolutely adore. I've always been a fan of AIOs because they tend to work a little better. But obviously, the Noctua like NHC 14 and this Dark Rock Pro is obviously persuading me to go with uh, a few more um, fan cooled CPU. Uh, so for me, I absolutely love everything about it. The, the 10600 is a great value CPU at this moment in time. Obviously with the 11th gen CPUs not being amazing again with regards to performance, um, maybe the 11700 and the, the 11600 are good improvements, but I still think the value king is the 10600. Six cores, 12 threads, got everything that you want. And if you're only going to be gaming and the light bit of video work, it will be absolutely perfect. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to chuck in some power. We're going to get this baby turned on. We're going to see what it does. 
and if we actually reach the boot screen. Fingers crossed. So we've reached that critical time, guys. It's do or die. So I'm gonna bang some power. Good start. I can see power to the GPU. I know you can't, but I can. So let's go ahead. Let's hit that power button. Hey, thank God. Woohoo! So we've managed to get to the BIOS, guys, which is great news. Absolutely fantastic news. So at this moment in time, there is no uh, boot drive. Uh, or Windows installed on the boot drive. So I just wanted to make sure that we could get to uh, the BIOS and therefore we can change a few parameters in there. We can set some CPU um, configuration in there as well. We can change our fan curves and make sure that all our fans are working. In fact, they're all working now. That's absolutely fine. Um, and there's some really good airflow which is coming through there as well. So in my opinion, absolutely fantastic. No issues no problems whatsoever with anything okay so obviously what we don't do at this point is we don't uh, install uh, or apply any xmp profiles or anything like that our no uh, next very step from here is to take a flash drive make sure it's got eight gigabytes or more on it go onto the microsoft windows download uh, the windows 10 put it onto the usb stick and then we're going to Basically shut off this system, shove it into the back of the USB drive, into the back of the computer, restart, and then it should start the Windows installation process. All that we need to do is select which drive we want to obviously install our operating system onto and follow the onboard wizard. So guys, that's been it from me. I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a montage of this actual build itself or the case and how it looks now. If you found any value in the build whatsoever, then smash that subscriber button. Leave a thumbs up on the video because it really, really does help me out. And basically we've got a few surprises. I don't know whether anyone watched my live stream uh, last week, um, looking at basically how bad the situation is for computer parts, CPUs, PCs in general, especially uh, GPUs. But right at the end, I spent an absolute fortune on loads of upgrades for in here. So we're going to have much, much better lighting. We're going to have much better um, opportunity to live stream to uh, YouTube when we're doing these particular builds as well. Because it's something I'm really passionate about. And basically, we bought all the cables, the Elgatos and bits and bobs. I'm not going to go into because I'm going to do an unboxing about it anyway. But if you're interested in that, stick around for obviously the next video. Bang that subscribe button, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.